charts. You what charts package? What charting package you use? And how do you kind of have your charts set up? Do you have a? I use M24. Okay. Um, my, my charts are, are just fairly simple. There's not a lot on them. Mm -hmm. um, like I said, I look for patterns, looking for the one, two, three. I might sort of mark on a one, two, three with with um, a few lines. Um, I might put the odd um, support and resistance line on it, mm -hmm. sort of waiting for those to get broken. Is on, the, on the higher time frames, on the dailies and four hourlies, you do It'll this? It'll be a bit of both. Right. It'll be a bit of both. I might look at the, uh, the, the daily, um, see something I like, and then I'll move down. And as I move down, depends on how I've got to move down before I can start actually putting maybe a few lines on it, you know. Right. Maybe you might see sort of a, a smaller pattern on the 30 minute or something like that. Okay. So you, but it's uh, fairly, fairly bare. You know? Yeah, you're, you're yeah. a real component of keeping it simple and clean. Fair and yeah, 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 yeah. Um, and it, the more stuff on there, the more cluttered your decision making is and stuff. Right, okay. Did you have, did you have what, kind of one screen up with, you flick between your daily and your four hourly as, as you want to look at it? You just literally minimise one and bring the other I up? Just, I, I just, yeah, I just minimise one up. Yeah. I just say one chart. One pair, and then analyse that up and down. Yeah, sure. And I'll just I'll probably just keep going up and down it a few times, just to get a sense of what's what's happening with it. So you've got your was it thirty or so pairs, 30. give or take, that, yeah, you, yeah. that you monitor, and then you've got a couple of favourites that you know are in play, perhaps in that week. Is that how you do it, or do you always look at the thirty every day? Or oh no, I'll always look at them. Right. I'll always look at every single pair. Yeah. Um, but you do sort of suddenly realise, right? Well, I know there's not much I can do with that one because mm. you know it's still a long way from any reasonable support and resistance. Okay. You know there's nothing in play. So you wait until you've yeah. That's the beauty of having a, an array of markets to look at. Yeah. I guess so you decide where you want to do business potentially, and yeah. you just keep checking if it's there. If it's not there, you don't even look at it again until it is there. Yeah, it, it's sort of. To be quite honest, what I do is I try and um, eliminate pairs. Mm. Rather than bringing it in, bringing rather than it in. forcing a trade onto a pair, yeah. if there's nothing there, gone. Anything, gone. Anything, get rid of them. Yeah. Pick. You, you're trying to pick the best strategy. You're yeah. grading your strategy. You're grading what's mm. on the screen. Get rid. Get rid. And yeah. If, if they're quite reasonable, or I want to take a look at them. Then I'll move them to the front. I'll move it. Move them all to gotcha. the front. One to one. Yeah. And then I've just got a cluster of maybe five or six. And out of the five or six. They'll get taken down to one or two, and you know the potential opportunity there. And that's a potential opportunity, mm -hmm. and there might not be a, a trade for that day, but there might be a trade coming up mm -hmm. if the market moves in the right way. Yeah, that's yeah, interesting. Yeah, yeah, because it's it, it's it, trading generally is about bringing in your focus, isn't it? From you said strategy, bringing your focus on your strategy, bringing your focus on your time frame. Yeah your pattern, your markets, because yeah. there's so much. You can trade every time frame, any market, option strategy, this, right. you know, there's so much. You've got to be laser focused on one thing. I mean, like, like, like you said once in the meeting, you, you can always make an excuse to buy and sell mm. any time. Yeah. You can. Yeah. yeah. You can pick a chart and go, right, give me a bullish thesis. Yeah. Someone will say it, right, give me a bearish thesis. Yeah. Both very sane arguments. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Both decent, but... Yeah. <laughs> so you've got to laser in on your strategy and bin off. Just get rid of the waste. Yeah. You know, and especially as newbies, stop trying to trade as much as you can. Mm. You've got to do the opposite. You've got to trade the least you can. Which you would, you would say over-trading is another thing to watch out for. Oh, yes. Yeah, I think that's guilty a, again. <laughs> yeah, hands up as well. Yeah. yeah, I think that that's common with many over trading because we want to. I don't know about you. The way I feel of it is, if I'm not trading, I'm not going to make money. Well, actually, feel I'm a new, newer trader. I'm not in a trade. I can't make money. So I have to be in a trade to make money. I don't want to make money, right? I'm a trader. <laughs> but then, as you start to grow and improve, yeah. you recognise well, I can lose as well. So maybe I need to be yeah. a little bit more careful and structured about how I trade. Because again, as, as a newbie, it took some time to realise that you can't go into the market every single day and make money. Mm. Doesn't always work. Sometimes you can, but it doesn't always work like that. Mm. Sometimes you have to wait, and it's like yeah. a bit of patience to get the right strategy to appear at the right time, and you're off and running. 
you know, if you're a scalper, then fair enough, maybe your opportunity appears more often. Mm. But when you start looking at the bigger time frames, they get reduced slightly. Mm. But even as a scalper, you, you, I mean, there'd be times in the day where it's quiet and you probably haven't got your edge. Yeah. And if you're over trading, you, you've got no edge. You're just trading at lunchtime, it's chopping, whereas maybe you've got more opportunity to open or. So, it, yeah, it's about nailing that in, isn't it? So, you, you would quite comfortably go a couple of days without a trade if, yeah, you, if it wasn't the yeah, setup. Yeah. yeah. How many, how many trades do you have on any one time? You've got a, does it, is it, a kind it can of vary, but it's not usually a, a, a huge amount. It could be four or five, six trades. Gotcha. Something like that. Um, and so you're waiting for them to either you stop or you target, yeah. and then yeah. just monitoring them like that. Will you do any adjustments? Oh, yeah. I mean, I'll. To the trades? Or, <clears throat> or, or, like, or are you set and forget and. You can, well, it depends if you limit orders or, or you know. Um, mm. Pending orders or anything, but normally, we, we, if I'm in a trade, I look at it in the morning to see whether um, there's anything I can do with it. Is it worth moving the stop loss? Mm -hmm. You know. Um, right. Yeah. So you'll perhaps ratchet up the, lot, the stop loss if it's yeah. got in your favour a bit to lock in a bit of yeah. those gains. Yeah. I mean, take take Australia or New Zealand. You might get some reasonable movement overnight. Mm. You know, you've been looking at it all day. The thing's done nothing, which normally happens. They're asleep. They're <laughs> awake. Asleep. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and at night time, yeah. sometimes it can be off and running. Mm. And again, assuming it's in your favour, um, you can get up in the morning and find it's time to move your stop loss to at least break even or start putting it into profit, depending on what your strategy is to move your stop loss. Mm. What is your strategy for, for moving? Have you got a is it flexible depending on what you see or have you got a finite where well, I've got to have at least 100 pips before I move it or do you look at the pattern and make for a yeah, level or? It's, 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 I'll tend to, what I, what I look for and obviously this doesn't always happen, um, get in a trade, a few it works in my favour, um, I'm, I'm again waiting for the pullbacks, mm. you're in, it pulls back, a percent of the time it'll pull back and take me out to break even. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the time, it'll go in my favour, pull back, and then drop again. Mm. And that's what I'm waiting for. Gotcha. And when it drops again, you can move your stop loss down to right. the next previous high. Uh, so you want it to retrace a bit. When it's done that... Oh, I pray then for retracements. You, gotcha. Some of the times, I will pray for a retracement. Right. I'm in it. And fine. That's I, interesting, yeah. I can be in, a, be in a trade, and I can be 60, 70 pips up. Yeah. And I can end up getting taken out of the stop loss. Right. But I'm waiting for the pullback and then the next pullback. So, so that's, that, that is the way you'll get the bigger trades. And you'll maybe add to the trade, will you, if yeah. you got you, and then ratchet the stop loss down on the lot. Yeah. And what you're looking for, and, and you don't get them all the time, but you're just looking for this stair step all the time, that's what you're looking for. Mm. So you can just move your, keep moving your stop loss to the previous one, that's what you're looking for. And that's that way you'll get the bigger moves.